I'm Mike Nelson, I'm the manager of power production here at Arizona Electric Power. Uh, what happens here is I try to, when I say my job is a plant manager, but really what it is, in my opinion, is just try to support all the other people we have out here working, kind of as guidance to the systems and then the things we have going on. So I'll be your tour guide, one of them today. Okay, what we're going to look at real quick here is this is a combined cycle gas unit. When we talk about natural gas, this is really a summer peaker unit. This came in service in 1964 and we're still operating it, well not today, but it's, it's, we're doing some maintenance on it. And we use it really for summer peaking from really June to about October time frame. It was one of the original, what they called combined cycle, because when we go around this corner, I talked about this gas turbine we're rebuilding, we'll see that we take hot exhaust out of the gas turbine that would normally go to atmosphere. It would just go up and we wouldn't use it. Well, you use that, we control some dampers, we take that 800 degree exhaust and we put it in this furnace for a primary combustion air. So you're reusing that heat. There's been a lot of increase in the technology on this type of system here, but it still is a viable unit today and we're, we're doing some maintenance on it. If you look at this side right here, this large structure right here, before you get to the silver clad, that's our boiler structure. And that's where all the steam is produced with all those tubing and where the steam is going to be made to actually send you the steam turbine. When you look at this silver kind of clad area with those hoppers on it, that was our precipitator. That is where they electronically remove that fly ash from the flue gas that's going out, basically go up the stack. This area right here is called our ball tube alley, our ball mills right here. This is those drums that actually crushes the coal right here. If we look at the end right here, you'll see that turning. So it takes about, each, there's three mills that takes all three of those to make full capacity on this generating unit. So then we got some high flow PA fans that pick the coal dust, the fines out of that mill and transport it back up to the burner decks. So this is really where all the coal crushing goes, takes place right here. The coal processing on this side right here. You might have to kind of wait and give yourself around the water. Fly ash collectors, we talked about fly ash. Here's a collector right here. We got a vacuum pump around the back side, but here's the collection pod that comes in those hoppers in this collection pod. Or that collection pod. So there's one right on the other side, both right there. What we're getting ready to do now is we're going to get in the elevator and we're going to go up. Give everybody a good visual up, upstairs. This right here is what we call our steam drum. Remember, we talked about the water and steam separation on these units, where the steam forms up the tube walls, it comes to the steam drum. There's a lot of heat in here, and this is where the steam separates from the water, then it goes to get superheated. When I say superheated, it's going to become a thousand degrees then. We're going to take out every bit of moisture that's in that steam. There's going to be no more moisture whatsoever. Not like your steam kettle, you know, steam puffing. Nothing here. As it passes over, it's going to go, like I said, become main steam. You can see the wall thickness is about a five and a half inch wall thickness on here. Very critical. We maintain a water level in here about this level at all times. Very critical on the cool down and shutdown of these units of how you, the expansion and contraction and the rate of differential between the top and the bottom. As we head right here, we have our main steam line. And this is coming out of the boiler. So when I talk about 2,400 pounds of pressure at 1,000 degrees, that's flowing through this line right now, heading to our high pressure steam turbine. So this line is quite a bit smaller. The interior diameter of this line is really about eight inches, about a three inch wall thickness. As the steam goes down, of course it's heavily insulated, so you don't lose that thermal, you know, of your heat, you don't lose, you know, heat, heat reduction means you're not gonna have as much efficiency. You don't lose efficiency, yeah. These points right here, you'll look at these points right here. These units on the end of the drum, on various points of these units, have these ex expansion pins. And what we want to see is when these units cool down, we want to see these two pin points come back together. And they're in various ends of the drum, various ends of these units, or some expands about two to three inches out. And plus we grow about, uh, vertically, we'll grow about eight to 10 inches down vertically in these units. So when we cool down, we want to see all these points to make sure we're not hanging up. We were standing a moment ago right down there with that steam in the bottom there. So, you know, this is kind of where you were standing, right below you right there.
like I said, the tricky part is sometimes with these safeties lift, we have sometimes, it's like your hot water heater safety. If we overpressurize these units for some reason and we have safeties that lift at different points, it's like a jet engine roar. You can see this pressure gauge right here. That pressure gauge shows 2,600 pounds. So that drum right inside there's 2,600 pounds of steam pressure. So if that, if that pressure starts getting up to about 27, 2650, we have various safeties that will relieve the pressure so you don't have a boiler explosion. You'd really get all that pressure out of here. So this is where all the coal is being blown into the furnace right here. All that coal and all that process right here on both sides of us, we have burners that are coming in. That coal is being blown in. This is where all of our combustion. So when we talk, we're about 2600 degrees right in this area if you go in. If you wanted and you want to barbecue some wieners or steaks, it gets real done quick and it doesn't taste good. I mean, it's got a... So what we have these things right here for is when we want to do inspections, we'll shove these clinkers off the wall and you can feel the heat. Now, if I would take, and you can just feel, if I would take just a normal rag here, I'm not a magician here, but it, you know, we got a negative draft, it wants to pull in. So you got fire just right there, so it's gone. There you go. So if this was a positive furnace, all this coal dust would want to come out on the cracks on us. So this is a negative pulling in. So any crack in these walls is pulling in air. So we want to monitor all that because we don't want excessive air. It hurts your combustion. So that again, that's where all the, the fuel is being blown in right in this area. These lines right here, are the lines that are transporting the fuel to where we were just up there on deck when we saw it first when we first saw the fires. This is where it's getting blown in with that PA fan, primary air, moving this fuel up these lines and then it's getting blown in the furnace walls right there. This control room right here, these are our control room operators right here, Ralph and Brad, and then our shift supervisor are managing all that you see here today is Horacio Machichi. There's about seven guys here that run this facility without maintenance here on weekends and holidays and things we, and night shifts. We just don't have any maintenance. Unit two, unit three, and then what they do also, they can, they can operate any unit, like unit one, we looked at the combined cycle. We looked at all the combustion turbines, the gas turbines. They will operate everything from this control room right here.